Hey there everyone, Audio Knight here, and welcome to a tutorial for how to make a custom moon in Lethal Company using Nom Nom's Lethal Company Project Patcher and I Am Batby's Lethal Level Loader. My main credential for the creation of this tutorial is that I am the creator of the Star Lancer mod pack, which includes Star Lancer Moons, Star Lancer Music, and the Star Lancer AI fix. Before we actually create our Unity project, there are two prerequisites to following this video. First, we'll be using R2 Modman as our mod manager. It is, in my opinion, the best way to mod Lethal Company, and so this video will assume that you are also using it. Second, we need a very specific version of Unity, the same version that Lethal Company itself was made in. Version 2022.3.9F1. I'll be leaving a link to all the resources used in this video down in the description below. Nom Nom has already provided us with some steps and some requirements, but I'm going to go ahead and talk you through them. Git is required for us to actually pull Nom Nom's patcher into the project. From my understanding, Git is the basis of GitHub, and people use it to push their files into a GitHub repository. Most people will probably want the 64-bit Git for Windows setup, but they do have Mac and Linux downloads available as well. This is me from the future. I almost forgot to mention that if you encounter any issues with installing a package from Git URL, even if you have Git installed on your computer and you've restarted Unity, make sure that the drive that you have your Unity project installed on is file system NTFS. If it's an XFAT, the Git URL package installation will fail. After you have the correct editor version installed, we're going to go to New Project, we're going to find 3D HDRP, it may tell you that you need to download the template. For the sake of this video, we're just going to be naming this Tutorial Project. Choose whatever location you want, and Create Project. It'll automatically open when you create a new project, and the time it takes for everything to get set up depends on how powerful your computer is. If your project is still in the process of opening up, go ahead and pause the video and come back whenever you're done. We'll be moving on to downloading Nom Nom's LC Project Patcher, which will allow us to access assets from the base game in order to use in our Unity project, and eventually playtest our project in Editor. The next requirement we already have, Unity 2022.3.9F1. .NET 8.0 is from Microsoft. Find your correct operating system. Uh, again, most people that watch this video are probably going to be on Windows, download the x64. I'm not familiar with Mac or Linux, so download it appropriately. When your project opens, you'll be greeted by the HDRP wizard. You can go ahead and scroll down and untick show on start. We're not going to be needing this. If you want, you can remove the readme assets. That's entirely personal preference. This video is going to assume some general Unity experience at the very least how to navigate around it. We'll go up to Window, Package Manager, and from the LC Project Patcher GitHub, we're going to right-click, copy link address, this Git repository link, back in Unity in the Package Manager, add package from Git URL, paste, add. Once the package installation is complete, we can exit the Package Manager, we're going to go to Tools, Nom Nom, LC Project Patcher, Open. Upon opening the Project Patcher, you'll notice that it has created some folders for us by default. This next point is very important. If you have Dungeon or any other Unity Store asset that you wish to include in the project, go ahead and download it and put it in Unity Asset Store. Most assets, like models and textures and stuff, this is just a nice way to keep everything tidy. Dungeon is important to go ahead and have in here because the patcher will automatically see it and do things a little differently. Here in Lethal Company Data Path, you're going to direct the project patcher to your Lethal Company data folder in Steam. Make sure this is correct, otherwise the patcher will do pretty much nothing. For the purpose of this tutorial, go ahead and uncheck Use Games X folder. In the future, if you do this, make sure to restart Unity just in case. Now we run the patcher. This can take a while. Unity's gonna restart a few times. Make sure to keep the editor window focused. Just let it do its thing. When it asks you about using the new input system package, say yes. 
At this point in the video, I would like to stress that this project is only for people that actually own Lethal Company. If you don't own Lethal Company, you have no assets to work with. Please do not pirate the game. It is $10 on Steam. Buy it. It's a great game. Okay, now that the patcher has finished, you'll see that we are on init scene launch options scene. If it's blue, what we're going to want to do is we're going to go to edit, project settings, under graphics, click this drop down, and make sure that it is assigned the HD render pipeline asset that can be found at assets unity native. Under HDRP global settings, same thing. Make sure that the HD render pipeline global settings is also found in Unity native. The default volume profile asset, however, needs to be the one found in Lethal Company game scriptable objects. The scene will now turn black. And if you want to, you can actually go ahead and play in editor. Online mode is, of course, not supported. So we'll click through to LAN and it'll take a second the first time you do this and then you just host like normal. Once you're done messing around, hit escape and click the play button again to end play mode. Very briefly, I'd like to talk about under the root assets folder, there is LC Patcher runtime settings. Here Nom Nom has provided us with some really great debugging tools. I'm not gonna go into them in depth because that's beyond the scope of this video, but infinite health, infinite stamina, starting credits, those are excellent debugging tools. And Integrity Chaos has provided us with an experimental posterization shader that will load at runtime so that our in-editor playing will actually look like Lethal Company. Under Lethal Company Game Scenes, you can actually access all the different moons that are in Lethal Company. And you can explore and you can see just how Zeekers actually set everything up. We're going to do some quick prep work here. We're going to go under Mods, right-click, Create, Folder. You can name it whatever you want. For the purposes of this video, we're going to name it Tutorial Mod. Inside here, we're going to create another folder real quick, call it Prefabs. Next in the hierarchy, go ahead and right click, create empty. We're just going to call this Prefab. Control click environment, nodes and points, story logs, systems, copy, paste, going to look weird. Drag them under here and let's go ahead, shift click all these and just disable them for right now. This way we're not messing with anything that's actually in the Valve scene. Not that it matters for when you actually go into the real game, but it's nice to leave them as default for reference. I'm just going to go ahead and remove these ones and just pull systems to the top. Under systems, we can get rid of foliage low detail and nav mesh. What we'll be doing here is using the structure of a vanilla scene to create our own custom moon scene. It doesn't really matter what scene you use, we're going to use Val just for this example. Under audio, we can go ahead and get rid of high and low altitude BG and forest ambience. We're just trying to create a nice clean setup. Under level generation, go to dungeon generator, open up generator here. Most of these settings you can just play around with, but we want to go ahead and remove level flow one. Under audio reverb presets, make sure that all four of these look like this. Under audio reverb presets, we're going to go into each one of these ambiences and make sure that change audio ambience, audio changes, make sure these are all empty or else it can cause problems later on for us. Rendering has an occlusion area already made for us, which is this big green rectangular cube. What you want to do with this is you want to overlay it in the intended playable area of your custom moon. You can search for more information. Again, this is beyond the scope of the video. Under environment, we're going to go ahead and get rid of completed bow terrain, cutscenes, props, test room, map, hanging lights, lights container, test, and anomaly spawn zones. From here on out, things are going to look a little weird until we can get to making our custom moon scene. Under lighting, bright day, sun, sun anim container, we can go ahead and get rid of sky and fog global volume, sky and fog global volume 1, and storm volume. 
go ahead and get rid of ground fog and miscellaneous. Again, these are all things that we can add back in later for visual effect. But for right now, this is just a nice, tidy way of keeping things for a very, very basic moon. I'm also going to go ahead and pull these out under lighting and get rid of the bright day object. This bounds walls object contains a bunch of volumes that set the navigational area type to not walkable, making it so that stuff like forest keepers and baboon hawks and mouth dogs cannot navigate to these areas directly. Under reverb triggers, we're going to go ahead and get rid of cube 4, cube 5, activate cube 25, and remove cube 3. We're going to keep the interactables object so that we have ladders for reference. For the fire exit door container, what we're going to do is we're going to open up teleports, entrance teleport B. We're going to slightly adjust it just so that it's uh, neatly aligned. We're going to take the fire exit door container and move it under entrance teleport B. For entrance teleport A, we're going to do similarly. Do a nice alignment. Open that up. We're going to select plane, steel door fake, door frame one, and steel door fake one. Put them right under entrance teleport A. So now we can just select these parent objects and we can move the entire entrance. Same thing with the fire exit. One other thing we want to do is we're going to take spawn blocker two and we're going to parent it under entrance teleport A as well. And we're going to take spawn blocker, put it under entrance teleport B. This big red object down here is a simple out of bounds trigger. If somehow the player ends up falling through the facility entirely due to a glitch, they'll pop right back here up onto the ship. Go ahead and remove the empty spawn blockers object and collapse the environment. Nodes and points contains all of the different outside AI points. We'll worry about that later. Story logs, you might want to keep as just a simple reference. That way, if you want to make your own story log collectibles, all you have to do is adjust this. Now we'll take the prefab object, click and drag, and now we have a prefab. What we can do now is we can create a new scene. Go ahead and just have it empty. Don't bother saving. And then we just click and drag the prefab into our new scene. We're going to go ahead and save the scene. Lethal company, mods, tutorial mod. Let's make a new folder. Call it scenes. And just going to call this tutorial moon scene. You of course can name it whatever you like. One thing I'd like to do real quick because I didn't realize that Val was missing it is going to lethal company game scenes. We're going to open up assurance. Go to environment, go to reverb triggers, wind triggers, go ahead and select cube 30, which is this giant reverb trigger here. Control C, open recent scene, go back to our moon scene. We're going to right click our prefab object, go to prefab, unpack, unfold environment, go to wind triggers, click ship wind trigger 2. Control V to paste cube 30. Navigate back to your prefab and just click and drag it over that. Replace. From here, let's go ahead and unpack this again. Pull all of the objects out of it and delete the prefab object. This is just for a convenient storage for all of our basic assets. From here, right click environment, go to 3D object, terrain. This is going to generate a large white terrain object for us. The current size of this object is 1000 by 1000. So if you set the position to negative 500 on the X and negative 500 on the Z, it'll be perfectly centered at our ship. But you'll notice that unfortunately it's too high for the ship and the ship is kind of hard coded in Lethal Company to land at a specific position. In order to get the best height, we're going to go ahead and create a 3D object named Player Height Ref. We're going to bump the scale up to 2.75 on the Y axis. 
go ahead and make it as flush as you can with the terrain. Move it to about the side of the ship. We're gonna select both of these and we're gonna drag them down. We're gonna set the height so that it's not impossible for the player to jump up if they have a two-handed object. This is roughly the amount that my moon Aralis is at. You can adjust the taste, of course. We'll go into Systems, Item Ship, Anim Container. You'll notice that it's a little tilted from where it was on the bow terrain. Set the X rotation to negative 90. Go ahead and up here, switch from Center to Pivot. Just makes it a little easier to grab a hold of. We're just gonna pull this down until it is just touching the ground. This is another thing that you're gonna want to adjust later, the item spawn positions. By default for some reason, and I guess Lethal Company fixes this at runtime, they're all gonna be kind of in the air. So what we'll wanna do is pull them down so that they land on the ground. For the purposes of testing, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull our teleports over in front. For right now, let's go into terrain. We're gonna go into paint terrain, edit terrain layers, add layer, and let's just go ahead and give this rocky ground just so it's less harsh on our eyes. If you run into the issue where things are disappearing when you get close to them, go up into the camera and make sure dynamic clipping is disabled. Under lighting, we're gonna go down to volume and create a sky and fog global volume. The reason we didn't save this from the vowel scene is because we wanted to create a unique sky and fog setting object. Go ahead and get rid of physically based sky and we're gonna add some overrides. First, we're going to add some shadows. Next, we'll add an HDRI sky. And one thing I like to add to my moons is sky volumetric clouds. It's a little bit more performance heavy, but I managed to get really good performance on my moons even using it. But that won't be done for this particular volume. Under visual environment, select HDRI sky. Ambient mode, make sure it's set to dynamic. Fog, we're going to go ahead and send to the bottom because that's one thing that you can adjust to taste. Shadows, we're going to want the max distance to be around 110. Everything else can stay the same there. We're going to move HDRI Sky up one under Visual Environment. Preemptively, we're going to go ahead and set the Intensity Mode to Exposure and Exposure Compensation to negative 2. Otherwise, when you enable HDRI Sky, it will blind you. Go ahead and set it to Cedar Bridge 1K. Distortion mode, procedural. Then if we fly up, we can see that we have a lovely little skybox. If we want the skybox to move under procedural distortion, we can increase the global speed under visual environment. Let's go ahead and set it to 500. And you can notice the skybox seems to start to move. It's a trick, it's a visual trick, but it does look kind of nice if you're standing on the ground. In order to lessen this fog a little bit, let's go into the local volumetric fog item. Go ahead and increase this fog distance to 100. Again, adjust to your taste later. The bounds walls are not really important right now. When you're done actually creating your level, that's when you'll want to rearrange them as you see fit. Under reverb triggers, 25 you can pretty much leave alone. For 17, 18, 28, 29, and ship when trigger 2. Go ahead and set the reverb presets to whatever you want the general feel of your moon to be. For right now, we'll just use Outside Forest. This just sets stuff like the EQ and the Decay and the Reverb. Ship Wind Trigger 1, we want to keep a small room reverb. Cube 30, we can also just leave as is. Again, the Interactables is just a nice little holder for ladders. That way we don't have to try and recreate them ourselves. Under Nav Mesh Colliders, go ahead and remove the Modifiers object. For off-mesh links, we can get rid of all the fences and the curbs. We just want to keep the ship ladders. What off-mesh links do is they create links between the nav mesh that's already present to nav mesh that is disconnected from it. For example, with ship ladder and ship ladder 2, 
These are the little ladders that lead from the ground onto the ship. Enemies like the Masked and the Eyeless Dogs use those ladders to get in, but without the off-mesh links, they would just be stuck wandering around on the ground. We're gonna go ahead and move our teleports closer to the ship so that we can more easily access them when we test our moon. One thing you want to check real quick is to see where the telepoint is, because this will determine where the player actually comes out. So for this, we rotate it this way, and the fire exit is actually already aligned properly. Go ahead and set those on the ground, and now we have a nice little test environment. I know we briefly skipped over the scan nodes. The scan node allows you to see the main entrance from a distance. We're just going to go ahead and move that on top of that. It's very large for Val because it's a very big building. Adjust it however you like. I am going to just bring this much smaller so that it's only around the main entrance. You could also mark out the fire exit or anything else that you'd like to mark as a point of interest. Scan node 1 is just the ship. You can leave it where it is. This video won't be getting into the specifics of how to actually shape your terrain, but go into Terrain Settings, make sure Draw Instance is checked, go ahead and set the Detail Resolution per patch down to 8. Under Rendering Layer Mask, go ahead and make sure that Light Layer Default, Decal Layer Default, and Decal Layer 2 are checked. The decal Layers are important because Decal Layer Default is where Snow Footprints live, and Decal Layer 2 is where Quicksand lives. If you want to use snow footprints, go into one of the vanilla snowy moon scenes and copy the snow footprints object. I'll have a picture of it on screen. Tagging your terrain correctly will also determine what footstep sound is played when you're walking around, such as grass, snow, gravel, catwalk for the metal steps and stuff. So make sure to set that properly to get the footstep sounds you desire. One other thing that was brought to my attention, however, is under paint texture for the terrain, if you go to, let's just use the air horn texture because it's funny. If you go to paint a texture on it and it ends up like this, what you'll need to do is go to edit, project settings, quality, and set this to full resolution. Now you can paint the texture to your heart's content. Moving on to nodes and points. We can go ahead and just delete all of these and leave the first one. What this does is it's tagged outside AI node and it is what marks where enemies and other outside objects spawn. To make things easy to visualize, we're going to go to add component, mesh filter, we're gonna scroll all the way down and set it to sphere. Then we're going to add a mesh renderer component and set the material to be test trigger red. It's under the terrain right now, but if we pull it up, ta-da. We can go ahead and also put this on the triggers layer. It doesn't have a trigger built into it, but what this will do is hide it at runtime. From here, you can use control D and you can duplicate it and just set these around your scene. In addition to determining where things spawn, this is also what the outside AI will use to determine where it wants to patrol. So it'll look at an AI point, set it, and walk towards it. When it gets there, it'll set a new point, walk towards it, so on and so forth. In order for enemies to actually navigate outside, however, we need what's called nav mesh. Luckily, our environment object already has all the necessary settings. All we have to do is go into nav mesh surface and click bake. If you don't see anything change, down in the bottom right under AI Navigation, go to Surfaces, Show Nav Mesh. Everything that is in blue is stuff that the enemy can actually access. You'll notice that it abruptly stops here, and that is because of the bounds walls that we have in place. You can see how it will remove it from here, but over here where no bounds wall exists, it's still created Nav Mesh data. Make sure to save your scene, now we're going to add the plugins that will allow us to actually load the moon into the game. In R2 Modman, I've gone ahead and created a tutorial profile specifically for this. The tutorial profile just has these, nothing else. 
Make sure you have Lethal Level Loader, Lethal Lib, Hook Gen Patcher, and Bepinex Pack. When you have these installed, go ahead and start modded once. As soon as the game actually comes up, close it. From here, we're going to go to Settings, Browse Profile Folder. This will take us to the location on our computer where the tutorial profile data is saved. We'll go into Bepinex, Plugins, go ahead back into Unity, go to Assets, Lethal Company, Tools, Plugins, Bepinex. Highlight all these, drag and drop. It'll take just a moment for Unity to import them. In addition, we're going to go to Assets, right click in the Assets window, show an Explorer. We'll go into Lethal Company, Bepinex, Plugins, and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. What this will allow us to do is create Lethal Level Loader Extended Level. This is what creates the routing in the terminal. However, we do need one other thing. We're going to go into Game. We're going to go into Scriptable Objects, Selectable Level. And if you have a difficulty level in mind for your moon, go ahead and select that for this. I'm going to go ahead and just Control C on Experimentation Level. Go back into our Tutorial Mod and Paste. This way, you have a good starting point for how your moon will be. For the scene name, you need to make sure that it is the same as the scene that you're actually working in. Level ID can be left blank. You do need a moon prefab under planet prefab. Moon 1 is the sort of deserty moon used for experimentation and assurance. Moon 2 is the foresty one for March and Val, and Moon 3 is the snowy moon for Ren, Dine, and Titan. These don't matter much for gameplay, but you do need them. We're going to set the planet name to Tutorial Moon. Level description doesn't really matter right now. I'm going to go ahead and select None for the video clip. Most of this stuff is pretty much whatever you want it to be. You can choose what random weathers show up on your moon, and if you hold Alt and click, it will go ahead and expand the items inside as well. We will not be discussing weather variables, that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Dungeon flow types. Base game only has two. You have zero and one. Zero being the factory tile set, one being the mansion. Spawnable map objects. Leave this as default. It seems to cause some trouble if you adjust them too much. Spawnable outside objects has to do with the rocks and trees that generate randomly whenever you load in. Spawnable scrap, pretty self-explanatory. Here you set all the different rarities of them. Min-max scrap and scrap value. Really, you just have to play around with them. I've noticed a large inconsistency with how the values are set versus how they actually present in-game. Level ambience clips. Level 1 is what experimentation and assurance have. Forest type ambience, Val and March, Mansion type ambience, Rend and Dime. I think level 1 type ambience is also present on Titan, but I could be wrong. Level enemy values, very important for how difficult your moon will be. Max enemy power count refers to the inside power count, outside enemy power count refers to like the forest keepers and eyeless dogs, and daytime enemy power count is for the docile locust bees and the manticoils. If you're using Starlancer AI Fix, you can put any enemy that you want into enemies and outside enemies, and they will work as expected. Again, you set the rarity of each enemy. It's not something that needs to add up to 100, so pretty much just vibe it out. The spawn chance throughout the day is determined by these animation curves. Zero representing the start of the day, one representing the end of the day. Again, just kind of feel it out, see what works best for you. Spawn probability range is something that I don't quite understand, so I'm not going to make any claims on it. If you want your level to have any kind of footprints, you need to tick off level includes snow footprints. In addition, I believe that you have to have the terrain actually tagged as snow. 
One other thing that I'd like to add is that if you want your terrain and everything to actually show up on the ship's radar, you'll want to go into Layer and set it to Room. This is what allows objects to actually show up on the ship's radar. Level icon string, not really necessary. And let's go ahead and rename this as Tutorial Level. Let's rename New Extended Level to Tutorial Extended. We'll drag and drop Tutorial Level into Selectable Level. And here you can set the price. We'll just leave it as zero for testing purposes. Generate Automatic Configuration is wonderful because Lethal Level Loader will automatically create a configuration option within itself to set various settings for your moon, like scrap spawns and enemy spawns, and route price. Level tags is not entirely necessary. It is sort of made for a future idea for Lethal Level Loader where you can assign interior tile sets to certain level tags. You can choose whether or not to allow custom dungeon content in your moon. I don't know exactly how strict this is, but the option is there. Story logs is where you would actually put your story log objects in order to prompt the game to reveal the story log on the terminal. So what we're going to do for asset bundling is we're going to back out into the mods folder. We're going to select the tutorial mod folder, go to asset bundle, new, and we're going to call this, you guessed it, tutorial mod. Hit enter, otherwise it won't save. Go to none, click new. This is where we're going to add the file extension to the bundle. And lethal level loader looks for lethal bundles. Now we need to go into scenes, click on the tutorial moon scene itself, and we're going to make another one. We're going to call this tutorial mod scene. Same as before, set it to lethal bundle. We're going to go to Window, Asset Bundle Browser. Make sure that there's no actual issues. This will give us a bunch of uh, warnings saying that there will be duplicated assets. That's fine. At some point, Lethal Level Loader will actually find the base game assets and remove them from the asset bundle when built, thus saving a ton on file size. Go to Build, and what we're going to do We'll go to Browse, go to Lethal Company, Tools, Plugins, Bepinex, I am Batby Lethal Level Loader, click on Lethal Bundles, select Folder. This will just keep it in the project and keep it nice and tidy. Go ahead and click Build. This will take a minute, and when it's done, we will actually be able to go into the game through the editor and test our moon. From here, we'll go to File, Open Recent Scene, Open init scene launch options. Click play. As before, click LAN. Online mode is not supported for obvious reasons. Go over to the terminal. Go ahead and enter your favorite animal. Describe your role in the team dynamic. And you'll see our tutorial moon is in the terminal. Wait for it to route. Start game. And ta-da! We have created a very, very basic moon. A custom moon using lethal level loader. Make sure to remove your player height ref before you actually publish your mod. But we can go inside. It'll compile some shaders every so often while it gets things ready. It's beautiful. So again, huge shout out to Nom Nom for creating this utility that allows us to actually playtest our mods in Unity. Thank you so much. So yeah, you'll see that enemies are able to navigate properly. You can interact with everything. Uh, bees do not show up. Forgot about that. The shader for bees may be a little broken right now. So be aware of that. That was not what I expected from that. 
we have the perfect height for jumping up and down off the ladder. Ladders are interactable. Everything works as it should, except for bees. Also, if you decide to put a blob outside as a prefab, it will not show up. You'll have to actually make it spawn naturally. And again, you need Star Lancer AI fix if you want it to behave appropriately. All right, so that wraps up this tutorial. If you have other things that you'd like to see me make a tutorial on, please leave a comment down below. Uh, again, huge thank you to I am Batby and Nom Nom for their incredible work in the Lethal Company modding community. By extension, I'd also like to thank Evasa because without her, I'm pretty sure Lethal Level Loader never would have started. Could be wrong. Either way, big help to the modding community regardless. I'm going to go ahead and end this video with me promoting myself. If you like the music that you've been hearing playing in the background, you can download it on the Thunderstore. You can also listen to it on Spotify, link to my Spotify down below. I myself am available for voice acting, music creation, music production, and if you really need some personalized one-on-one -on -one guiding through this process, I am available to book for lessons. If you're interested in hiring me for any of my services, please use the business email on my YouTube profile. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this really helps out the modding community. Everyone's been super nice. Everyone's been very helpful, very constructive in their feedback for people. And I look forward to seeing what everybody does with this. Take care, everyone.